Okay, what's going on everybody? My name is Mang, and E3 happened this last week. E3 2016, the Electronic Entertainment Expo. And um, this is a little late. I know, I was in, I was in Colorado, so I didn't get a chance to uh, put out a video ASAP. But I did watch it live on Twitch. Everything, it's all on Twitch. It's all on Twitch now, it's crazy. Um, yeah, Twitch is, Twitch is pretty popular, so I watched all the conferences along with, you know, hundreds of thousands of other people, and now I'm going to talk about them, and I will give my opinions on things in order. I think there was like a Square Enix or something like that conference, but that was like a week before or something like that. I don't even remember it. I don't know if there was any news whatsoever. So it doesn't matter. We're starting with EA. <sighs> EA, the EA conference is generally not my, it's close to my least anticipated. Um, Ubisoft might be my least anticipated just, <sighs> but on the other hand, Ubisoft is so ridiculous. That it's kind of like, well, I gotta see what they do this year to top their fuckery from last year. Um, E3 is just, or EA is generally just kind of boring. It's just, okay. They got a Battlefield. What Battlefield is it this year? Oh, it's Battlefield 1? Okay. Yeah, that's EA. Here's some sports. EA has never understood that the people watching E3 live, the conferences watching on Twitch, do not care about Madden and FIFA. Maybe they do. Maybe there is a small portion of those people that are watching on Twitch, and like they, they do play FIFA. They like FIFA. I know people, you know, I know a few people that do play pretty much all the modern, you know, all sorts of genres of different games, RPGs and blah, 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 but they also play FIFA. Okay, but the majority don't. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I have no idea. But I don't like it, so get it out of here. So anyways, okay. They started off about talking about Titanfall 2. Titanfall was a Xbox One exclusive. Except that it also came out for PC, so not exclusive to much. <sighs> like, that, that just leaves... That just leaves... Uh, they basically just mean it's a non-PS4 game. That's what they mean. When you say Xbox One exclusive, you just mean non-PS4. Okay. Because nobody's talking about the Wii U around these parts. So, okay. Titanfall, Xbox One, and PC. And I like Titanfall. I liked it quite a bit. I put a bunch of hours into it. Um, I don't know what it's... I mean... I don't... I, I, I never played on PC, so I don't know how big it was on there. But I don't. it's not talked about much. Titanfall is not talked about that much. But it did well enough that it earned a sequel. And so I'm pretty excited about this one. Because um, Titanfall, I thought, was a... You know, it's from the guys that did Modern Warfare 2. Well, it's part of the team that did Modern Warfare 2. Which is probably my favorite first-person shooter of all time. So... You know, I'm, I'm excited. You know, I was excited for Titanfall. I thought they delivered on it. It was very well done. It was unique in some aspects. Uh, it was frenetic. And so, um, you know, I want Titanfall, but I want I want even more. I want more stuff, more going on, new options, more guns, more Titans, all that stuff. Seems like that's what Titanfall 2 is. Uh, we got a multiplayer trailer slash gameplay. Looks, looks dope, as the kids say. Very dope. Highly dope. Um, and then also, like, the day before, uh, or, like, the same day or something like that, there was a leak that Titanfall 2 was going to have a single-player campaign. It was a big leak. And they even joked about it during the conference. So it wasn't as big a reveal as it could have been because anybody, you know, at the, watching the EA conference, you know, interested in Titanfall 2 probably heard about the leak already. So, yeah, that, that kind of sucks for them, but... All right, whatever. It doesn't matter. So Titanfall 2 is going to have a single-player campaign, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, it's kind of funny because Call of Duty, like, nobody gives two shits about the campaign. I think they said, like, I don't remember the number, but it was like 96% of people 
the buy a Call of Duty, don't ever touch the campaign. It was it was some in, number in the 90s, I'm pretty sure. Um, and yet, even I, I don't care about the Call of Duty campaigns, whatever, whatever. But I'm pretty excited for a Titanfall 2 single player campaign. That sounds, that sounds dope. It all sounds dope. Uh, it's coming out on 28th of October. So after I do my entire month of VR horror games, I can relax and, and celebrate by playing Titanfall 2. So good stuff. Then we talked about Madden. Yeah, they cut it over to Peter Moore in London to talk about Madden. I don't know why they needed to, like, why did they need to go to London? Like, why have two separate locations? The grand, grand majority of people watching this are just watching it on the internet. I don't care if it's in California or London. Like, why are you doing this split? I don't know. So, a bunch of Madden stuff that went on for way too long. I think I went and made a sandwich. I, I, don't, I don't remember watching any of it. Uh, then they cut back, and they started talking about Mass Effect Andromeda. So, like, pretty much any big series uh, in any media at this point, it, it can't die. It doesn't go away. It doesn't, doesn't go away. It keeps going. Uh, even though the Mass Effect story is done, they're like, hold up. Stop the record. There's more money to be made here. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. But we can't call it Mass Effect 4. No, no, no. We're, we're past that. Numbers numbers are just... They're out. They're, they're out. They're done. Call it Andromeda. So it's Mass Effect Andromeda. We already knew about this game. And so I think a lot of people were hoping to see gameplay footage. Because I think... Plenty of us are very curious on if this will just be like Mass Effect. Like if it will pretty much just be Mass Effect 4. Or will it be a bit of its own thing? Well, we're not going to find out this year, that's for sure. Uh, no gameplay was shown. It was just a trailer with, like, some overlay and cross-cutting of, of, I guess, developers developing things. And, oh, let me draw stuff and look at imagine Mass Effect, yeah. I don't know. That's not what I want to see. I don't want to see a guy drawing Mass Effect. I want to see Mass Effect. I don't know. Um, so it's seen, it's going to take place in the Andromeda galaxy. I guess. If that's a galaxy. Uh, it's not going to have any of the characters from the other series. From the regular series. Uh, it's going to have like new aliens and new creatures and new all new planets and a new main character who seems to. Like they, it seems it's going to default to a female. Instead like the you know. Uh, the previous games defaulted to male because, <laughs> obviously. Uh, now, gender politics and all that. Defaulting to a female. So, I mean, I'll play it as a female. If they want me to play as a female, I'll play as a female. And, you know, I'm not going to play Tomb Raider and be like, where's, I, I don't like, I don't, I don't want to play as a chick. Get this chick out of my screen. I'll play what they want me to play. <sighs> um, and it seemed like from the glimpses they showed, there was, like, moments of gameplay. Not really, but kind of. We saw, like, the vehicle, like, the, the, the Land Rover or whatever from Mass Effect 1 uh, was, like, going around on a planet, so that'll be in it, I guess. From the way they were discussing it, it sounded like it'll be a bit more open than the other games. Which, you know, the other games were fairly linear, in the way the planets worked. Um, this one, perhaps a bit more open world, but not that open world. I mean, come on. Come on. There's no way it's going to be that open world. You're just going to be exploring all these planets, like 12 different planets fully. It's not... So, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be. They didn't show much, so... And then they cut back to Peter Moore to talk about FIFA. I'd rather have Peter less. Am I right? And they, like, brought out... They were talking about fee football managers. And it's like, I don't... Really? That's what... Like, I, like, I don't care about football or soccer or football. 
but like people playing like FIFA games are like, man, you know this FIFA, this FIFA 16. It's pretty good, but for FIFA 17, I really want some real life managers in game, so I can pretend to be them. Those guys are awesome. I don't know. It just I don't know. Madden doesn't. Well, maybe Madden does have coaches. I have no idea. I just and they brought out some guy who I guess is a manager for some sort of sport. Like you could you could tell me he was just an actor or something. I would have no idea. So okay. And then they talked about single player mode for FIFA 17 called The Journey. And it's like oh, that's what I that's what I want. I want I want my Titanfall 2 single player and my FIFA campaign mode, the journey. And there's like voice. I was just, my God. I, I think I made another sandwich during that time. I don't know. Uh, so then I talked about, I know this is going to be a really long video. <laughs> uh, they talked about EA originals where they want to bring indie games uh, to market and they want to help along with the process and steal all the profits and, you know, things, you know, just little things like that. And they showed off a game called Fee? Fee, 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 No, Fee. F-E. I, I think, I mean, it's capital F, lowercase e, which, I mean, I guess that's just proper capitalization, I guess. But it's also could be iron. But I didn't see much iron going on. It looked like Ori and the Iron Forest. Ori and the stolen property forest i don't know it looked like ori in the blind forest in 3d i'll probably play it so then jade raymond came to, to came out to talk about star wars and so it was just like oh big epic star wars hype and there was more people drawn and like oh i'm drawing star wars i'm drawing r2d2 and oh yeah <laughs> and there was like epic john williams music playing like oh star wars yeah and they didn't show jack shit of anything. There was no like there, there was no gameplay shown of anything. They talked about three games. They didn't show gameplay for anything. I think there was like three seconds of uh, the visceral game, but that that's it. So they're working on a new Battlefront game because the Battlefront that came out kind of sucks and nobody plays it. Um, there's the game coming out in two years from Visceral Games, and then there's Respawn Games which is the, the company that's doing Titanfall, they're also apparently working on some sort of third-person Star Wars game, which could be cool. Not that we saw any of it. Also, if you don't have... If you have a game... If you have a game that you know isn't coming out before next E3, don't show it at this E3. Like... I, I know that's kind of what E3 is. It's a hype machine, right? Like, that's what they use it for. It's just a build hype, build excitement. It's a marketing thing. It, it kind of always has been. But I think Bethesda should have like should have set the gold standard. You know, when they announced Fallout 4 last E3, it's like, here, we're bringing out Fallout 4. It comes out in a few months. Get hype. And it's like, oh, holy shit, yes. See, they didn't announce this in E3 2014 because it wouldn't have been out by then. It, you know, they announced it at the proper time frame. 2018 like it could be late 2018 so there could be two more e3s before we see that game and they didn't even sh they showed three seconds of some guy walking out of a cantina i don't know anyways star wars sure then uh they ended of course with battlefield one with like jamie fox and zach efron and snoop dogg and I, I i i don't know they were playing battlefield one I'm not that... I'm much more excited about Titanfall 2 than, than Battlefield 1. I just... I haven't liked Battlefield since Bad Company 2, so... My guess, whatever. Um, yeah. And that's not the last you'll see of Battlefield 1. So that was EA. Overall, I rate them a... a C-. minus bordering on D+. Because think about it. Actual gameplay. They showed Titanfall 2 gameplay. They showed Fee gameplay. And they showed Battlefield 1 gameplay. 
they also showed sports gameplay, but they lose points for showing sports gameplay, so that doesn't help them. So basically, three games. That's a shit conference. Like, you don't even have a conference at that point. <sighs> and just a lot of fluff, too much sports, too much sports. Um, not showing any Mass Effect, not showing any Star Wars of anything. Not showing any Mass Effect is probably the biggest offender, because it's like, okay, when is this game even coming out? C minus. Moving on, since we wasted 15 minutes on that one. Moving on to Bethesda. Now, this is funny. Last year, Bethesda was like, hey, guess what? We've got something big to talk about. We're going to have an E3 conference this year. We're going to have a conference at E3 because we got something big to talk about. This is just a one time thing because we have something so big we want to show off. We just have to do a conference. But it's a one time thing. And that big thing was Fallout 4. And it was like, holy shit, Fallout 4, look at this, and look at this. Oh, man, it looks, look at this, and, and, and Fallout 4. And they talked about a lot of Fallout 4. And it was like, ah, oh, yeah, cool. And they talked about some other stuff, but mainly they did the conference for Fallout 4, and it all made sense. And they, like I said, they kind of shook things up by announcing a game a few months before it came out. And they, and then they did it, and then that was it. And then they announced their next conference in E3 2016. It's like, well, what are you doing, Bethesda? You seem like you're doing more than one conference. But, okay, fine. So now Bethesda does a conference. I, I don't actually mind. The more conferences at E3, the better, because I, I just wa I watch them all. And, you know, it's just, it's like it's like the Super Bowl. It's like the Super Bowl for me. I, I like it all. Okay. So they started off by showing Quake. Quake Champions. So, I like Quake. Uh, when I was a youngin', like, you know, when I was, like, nine, <laughs> uh, nine or ten, uh, I played Quake. I played Quake Team Fortress, uh, which I think some people probably don't remember. Um, Team Fortress first started as a Quake mod. Uh, me and my brother played it all the time on M Player, which is far, far gone at this point. I'm not sure anybody remembers M Player. But, yeah, that's, that's how we used to play Quake Team Fortress. And, you know, I was just this little kid, and people, like, man, when when you gibbed somebody, when they just exploded in blood and guts, you know, very pixelated, polygonal guts, it was just, it was wonderful. I just, I want to do that in real life. Anyways. So, you know, I liked Quake way back then, because Quake Team Fortress. Quake by itself as a game was like, okay, but I preferred team fortress because we only had like one computer and, and so my brother played it almost all the time like he played it non-stop so i got very little time to play team fortress but it was so precious when i did um and then quake moved on and i kind of moved away from that you know i didn't i didn't play quake three or whatever i i don't know. i didn't play much quake after that so quake champions i don't know I'm not ecstatic about it. I guess I'm more excited about Quake Champions than the recent Doom game. Like, if I were to compare the two for excitement for myself, I guess I'd lean towards Quake Champions. Because it seems like it's a character-based shooter, which is all the rage now. It's Quake, which does kind of go back to my childhood a bit. Um, so, could be, could be something. Gameplay? No. <laughs> what are you thinking? Then they talked about uh, Elder Scrolls Legends. I think I'm signed up to be in the, invited to the beta. I don't know if I'll ever get that. Uh, I have a bad history with betas, I guess. So it doesn't really matter. I'll try it whenever. Uh, apparently, Total Biscuit says it's really good. Okay. It seems like a Hearthstone ripoff in every shape and form, but okay. Uh, then we got kind of an interesting trailer. Um... I didn't know what it was for. Because it showed a guy in like a space suit and there was like... His eye was getting red and things were getting crazy and weird and there was like... Shadow monster... I don't know what it was. It was revealed to be Prey. Now Prey came out a while back. I think I played it on like Xbox... Or, I, don't, I don't think I played it for long. Um, it was about a Native American as the main character which is very uncommon. So I think that was part of the 
not appeal, but part of the kind of gimmick or marketing. Some I, I don't know. Like, oh, we got a Native American main character. Isn't that wacky? Okay. It didn't sell that well, so I guess not wacky enough. And he gets, like, abducted by aliens, and there's, like, he has, like, Native American spirit powers or something. I, I don't remember much. And there was supposed to be a Prey, too. It was talked about for a while. It never happened. And now uh, there's just Prey. It's called Prey. And it seems like it has nothing to do with the original game. I don't know what this is. But it looked cool, so maybe I'll play uh, they talked about Doom Multiplayer DLC. Great. Uh, then they showed off... Uh, okay, they showed off Fallout 4 DLC as well. Uh, as well as Fallout Shelter coming to PC and getting some updates. Uh, Fallout 4 DLC, I don't really care about. The only thing that really kind of irked me... Was that they showed off that you could make your own vaults. And you could, like, have people experimented on like you could do vault experiments on people in game and this is just like how the f how did they explain this in universe how how does that work like vaults okay, like so the vaults were made before the bombs dropped right okay obviously like, that happens at the start of Fallout 4. You witness this. You get signed up to be in a vault, and you're like, okay, sure, I'll go in a vault. And then, like, three seconds later, oh, my God, we need to get in the vault. Like, it was just, wow, what a coincidence. And, you know, the vaults were somewhat designed to protect people, but mostly designed to just perform crazy Nazi experiments on people. Okay. So... Now, after the bomb has been dropped, like, the bombs have been dropped, bombs are done. There are no more bombs. The only bombs are, like, Fat Man and, you know, other minor nuclear weapons. Like, the Earth is pretty much devastated. Nobody is dropping weapons of mass destruction anymore. Why would anybody go into a vault at this point? Especially since you'd imagine that, like, word would get around that, Oh, yeah, you know, they use those vaults to really fuck with people and experiment them on them and shit. Hey, this dude's building a vault. You want to get in on this? You, should we Should we go? Look, look at what he's, he's building a vault. It's got weird syringes. Let's go. I, I don't know. I don't know how they explain it in-universe, but fine. Uh, then, okay, so the reason everybody was hyped... Well, okay, well, the reason some people were hyped about a Bethesda conference, another Bethesda conference, was <gasps> Elder Scrolls. Forget that Fallout. I want Elder Scrolls. Like, I know plenty of people that are just like, yeah, Fallout, uh, I couldn't really get into it. It's guns, uh, I don't like it. But Elder Scrolls, holy shit, orcs and swords, yeah! Like, I don't I prefer Fallout, personally, but I, 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 get, I guess I get it. I don't know, I just, I'm really down on Skyrim ever since I let's played it. Um... So I think some people were hoping, hoping, that they would announce Elder Scrolls 6. This was a foolish hope, because let's be real. They're, they're not Ubisoft. They're not going year to year on this shit. They did, however, announce something related to Elder Scrolls. Other than the card game, they announced Skyrim HD. More specifically, they announced Skyrim... PC edition. Okay, it's called Skyrim Special Edition, but it is literally, well, you don't have a computer cuz you're something. For whatever reason, you're not playing Skyrim on a computer. We won't judge you, but we'll try to make it as close to a PC as possible on your shitty console. So, uh special edition Skyrim, uh PS4 and Xbox 1. It comes with graphical improvements and mod support, just like they did for Fallout 4 recently. <sighs> it's also coming out on PC, but that kind of blows my mind. I guess what they said was like, yeah, you can get mods that make your PC version look a lot better. This just incorporates some of them out of the box, which I guess is okay, but if you already own... Skyrim on PC. There is no reason to buy Special Edition, I don't think. Um, 
Yeah. So, okay, fine. Skyrim HD Edition. Then they talked about Elder Scrolls Online, but nobody cares about that. <laughs> uh, they talked about VR. Now, I, of course, uh, I own VR. See? 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 Here it is. So, I'm all about that. And, uh, you know, Bethesda talking about VR. That piques my interest. You know, anybody, anybody, anyone at the major conferences talking about VR was like, all right, I'm putting it on receive, man. They talked about uh, two games, two experiences for VR. One was Doom. This is not, uh, this is not the recent Doom game in VR. Apparently, this is kind of a standalone. I want to say they somewhat described it as like an on rails thing. Like a... I feel like that's what they talked about. Um, Cause they, they, the wording that they used, I recall was not, this is doom in VR. Um, it's a separate kind of unique experience in the doom universe, but I think it's more on rails. Fallout 4 VR is fallout 4 in VR. That it is. It's, that's it. <sighs> Some people, of course, I'm going to be very, very excited about this. I and probably plenty of people that do have VR are skeptical. The biggest problem, well, one of the biggest issues right now with VR is locomotion. That is moving, you know, moving your character, moving your your view, um, and all sorts of different indie developers and probably you know regular developers are toying around and playing around and mixing with. Uh, forms of locomotion. But for a first-person shooter, it's tricky. You know, because it's meant to be somewhat fast-paced, generally. So you either do on-rails, which is probably what they're doing with Doom, uh, or you have some sort of teleportation thing, uh, or you just have it where you actually just use, like, the touchpad to move, and it's a bit more nauseating because you just, you don't... It, it, it's, it's very different. It's very different. It's, nobody really has perfected locomotion. And it's possible we may never perfect locomotion until we're just sending signals into our brain, you know, and we're just laying on a couch. So I think plenty of people that have VR, including myself, I'm including myself in this, are very curious on what they're doing for locomotion and how nauseating is it and how convenient is it and how fun is it. Um... So I'm skeptical, but on the other hand, I'm very glad that this is happening. I mean, Fallout 4 was one of my top games for last year. And, you know, VR is where I'm at right now, so I'm very glad that this isn't just, oh, we jury rig something, you, yeah, you can play Fallout 4 with, with your, your headset. It's a little nauseating, but you can do it. You can do that with Fallout 3. I haven't tried it because I'm sure I'd get nauseous, but... Um, that you can get, you can jury rig it. But Fallout, this is apparently an official thing. This is an official thing. Like, they are acknowledging VR, specifically the Vive, and that's very cool. They are acknowledging it officially at the conference. Like, hey, we're really working on this. This is really cool. We're bringing it to you. So, it's cool. It's cool. And then finally, they closed out with Dishonored 2, which is a game that I'm very, very much anticipating. Probably one of my most anticipated games. Um... And they showed off some gameplay. Looks good. Looks real good. And they announced that if you pre-order Dishonored 2, uh, you get Dishonored Definitive Edition right away. Which is... I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to be doing that. Because I want to play through Dishonored again. Uh, and I only had the regular version. So, I don't. you can't do this on Amazon. You can only do it where they charge you immediately. So, you can do this on Steam. So, there you go. <sighs> Um, yeah. Moving on. Because we're already a half an hour in, and we've got four more to go. Uh, Microsoft. Microsoft, I generally look forward to. Because they're really, you know, they're one of the big ones. You know, Bethesda, EA, Ubisoft. Yeah, they're, they're, they're big as far as third party, but they're not first party. So, yeah, I generally look forward to Microsoft, and I think a lot of people were curious about new hardware. 
because that's kind of been rumors and leaks and things like that going around about <sighs> new hardware and blah 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 and they started off that right away new hardware the xbox one s starting at 299 which is a very competitive price um I still don't know if I would recommend an Xbox One to anybody, but if I did, that would be a good price to do it. Uh, it'll be coming out in August. It's slimmer and smaller and much closer resembling a PS4 to maybe trick some people. And it'll have no connect port and... It'll be white, and that's that's kind of it. That's kind of it. <sighs> uh, okay, Gears of War. Gears of War. I don't care. This went on for way too long. They showed way too much gameplay. It wasn't that interesting. I don't. I don't. I don't care about any Gears of War. Anything. That is just what a shit series. Like you could have told me that was Gears of War two, and I'd be like, okay, I I don't care. Gears of War 4? Ugh. Um, they also take... They started this with Gears of War, and they went on through the whole conference. This thing of uh, Play Anywhere. So, if you buy... any of these games, these, these kind of Xbox exclusive games, on Xbox One, or on Windows 10, you will get it on the other system for free. There will be parody i guess um and your saves will transfer they will they will shoot up into a cloud and, and come back down um i don't know how many people really utilize something like this how many people i'm, I'm really curious i have no idea I, I have no idea like for me all of my shit is in one spot like, it's all here. Like, I don't game here and then realize, oh, man, I want to play my Xbox. Let me walk across to the other side of my house where my Xbox is. I don't know. Maybe some people are like, well, this is great. I can game for an hour with Gears of War, and then I can walk 30 feet and game for another hour on a less powerful system. I, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, but they were hyping it up. They were hyping it up and talking about it. Um, and the other thing was kind of this whole exclusivity with Windows 10, which... It bothers me. And I think it should bother people. I don't remember ever seeing a Windows XP exclusive. I remember there was a Windows ME exclusive, but it was literally just like a pile of shit. <sighs> Windows ME jokes. I, I used Windows ME for a while, so I know. Anyways, I, I, I think it just I, it should bother you how much they're pushing for everyone to use Windows 10. Like Windows 10 exclusive games. Like you can't run this on Windows 7. Windows 7 is not that old. Now, I'm not that technical of a guy, so I don't know the whole thing about Windows 10's improvements with, like, DirectX and shit like that. I, I have no idea. But it just seems, like, with all the, you know, the forced upgrades and, and things like that, and it just seems insidious, doesn't it? It just seems seedy. It, I, don't, I just, it's not right. It's not right. But... Not a damn thing we can do about it until Microsoft just goes down in flames. Anyways, uh, they also showed off a special edition Gears of War controller, which is like 120 bucks or some nonsense. Uh, Killer Instinct, they showed off General Rom. General Rom. My, that bastard. I played Gears of War 1 when it came out. And I played through that whole game. I don't know why, but I did. I got to this General Rom. And I don't know what I was doing. I must have been... I was shit. I was shit at that game. I tried him so many times. It was just so bullshit. What a bullshit fight. I put a hole in my wall. 
I literally, I punched a hole in my wall because I was just so pissed off at General Rom. So, fuck that guy. Uh, then they showed off this trailer that, that was really intriguing at first. It was like this like beautiful island and it was like nature and there were like animals hopping across this plane and I was like, oh, what is this? Like Far Cry 5 or, or is this like some Monster Hunter shit? Like, wow, this is cool. And then suddenly there's like a Lamborghini and it's like, ah, oh, Forza. And then I really stopped paying attention. It actually looked okay, to be perfectly honest. It, it did look okay. Uh, then they showed off ReCore. Here's another example. ReCore is kind of the somewhat indie game that they showed off last year. And then next E3 rolls around and it's still not out. Why show it off last year, man? I didn't, e I didn't even remember the game from last year. That's not good marketing. Like, what's the point then? You're just wasting time. Um, but it looks good. It looks, it's definitely a Let's Playable game right there. That is a Let's Playable game. Coming out in September, I believe. Then they showed off uh, Japanese action RPG number 15. I guess, if you want to get technical, it might be called Final Fantasy. But it's not Final Fantasy. It's not my Final Fantasy. It just looks, it just looks so un-Final Fantasy. I just, I can't get over it. I can't get over it. Um, and the dude playing it sucked ass. He was getting wailed on the whole time. And it was just like, it was just, it was like God of War mixed with Japan. And it was like, I don't know about this, man. Uh, fine. Uh, then they showed off uh, Division DLC. No, but nobody cares about Division DLC. It was, f it was funny in Twitch chat. Like it was just getting spammed with. It, it was either spamming downgrade or ninety three percent, which is the percentage of people that uh, stopped playing it after launch. And I am a part of that ninety three percent. Then they showed off Battlefield One. <gasps> Yeah, okay. I, I don't... They showed off just, like, a trailer. They showed off a trailer for Battlefield 1, which we already just saw, like, yesterday. Like, nobody cares. Then they announced some features for Xbox Live, such as background music and Cortana. It's like, hey, you know that thing that you bought that isn't a computer? What if we make it slightly more like a computer? Just to rub it in your face... That you didn't buy a good computer. Uh, they also announced like cl player communities, and they showed off like division players in LA. And I joked that it was like four members or four members are in that group because that, that's probably about it. Uh, looking for group. So if you don't have any friends to play multiplayer games with. You can search out, put out your, your feelers onto the wide web to find other people like yourself that also want to play with random people on the internet. Okay, I will never use it. Because that, that just scares me. People scare me. There, I said it. And Arena for Xbox Live, which is some sort of tournament platform, but nobody cares about that. Um, then they talked about Minecraft. They had two people that were just way too happy about Minecraft. You should not be that happy about Minecraft. Nobody should be that happy about Minecraft. And so last year, they showed off HoloLens with Minecraft. And that was actually like... I mean, now we know that HoloLens is not at all what it sh seems to be. Uh, but the demo last year for Minecraft was like, holy shit, look at this. This is some future shit. This is actually cool. I was talking to people about Minecraft. Like, that never happens. But it was cool. This year, I'm not talking to anybody about Minecraft. Um, you can play on Xbox Live with people on iOS. Which I guess for people that play Minecraft... I guess that's cool. But 
that should be like a little blurb on the Minecraft subreddit or something. That should not be part of the Microsoft conference. Ugh, whatever. Um, texture packs and just, you could, whatever. Then controller customization, Xbox design lab so you can get controllers in different colors. I, I don't, that's, that's not my thing. Like, I, I, I never look at my controller. I never look at my controller, unless I'm like, unless I'm grabbing it. It's like, oh, okay. Well, like once I'm playing with it, it doesn't matter what color it is. I don't. I'm, I'm a very pragmatic person, I guess. I just I don't care about that. But some people may want their puke green controller, and they can have it. Then they showed off uh, from the makers of Limbo. They showed off Inside, and this game comes out. I think it comes out on like the. It comes out this month. I'm almost certain it comes out at the end of this month. They didn't show any gameplay. This boggled my mind. This really honestly blew my mind. Because people are saying... People are already, like, playing it. Like, reviewers and things like that, they're playing it. They say it's incredible. Like, they say it's really, really good. So this is a really, apparently a really awesome game. That comes out in, like, a week. It gets showing at a conference. A Microsoft conference. And they didn't show any gameplay. They showed gameplay... Of Minecraft. But they didn't show this. It just, it just, oh my gosh. Um, I'm sure I'll play it though, fine. Limbo is pretty cool. Then, We Happy Few. This was really bugging because they didn't show the title till the end of the demo. They showed gameplay for this one a, a bit, I guess. I don't know if gameplay really counts, but okay. And I thought it was like an indie, I thought it was an indie Bioshock. I thought somebody had the Bioshock license and they made like an indie game out of it. That's how much it's like Bioshock. Uh, but, again, it looks very let's playable. I'm probably going to let's play it. Um, it looks freaky and weird and right up my alley. Then we had CD Projekt Red to talk about the Gwent card game. I don't get it. I, I honestly don't get it. Maybe somebody can tell me what the hell is the appeal of Gwent? I mean, I played Witcher 3. I did, I did a partly Let's Play of it. I played Gwent. I've played a bunch of Gwent. I know how it works. I know how it all works. I still don't see the appeal. I get the appeal of Hearthstone. I don't get the appeal of Gwent. It's just... It's so simplistic. And... I mean, chess is simplistic in, in at, up front, you know, so... Okay, maybe there's a lot of strategy to Gwent, and it's like a serious, like, look at this. But it's just, it wasn't fun. It wasn't a fun game. Did this really need its own... I don't know. Fine, if that's what people want. Then they announced Tekken! Tekken! Tekken 7. So I guess that'll give Killer Instinct some competition on the Xbox One. Dead Rising 4 with uh, Frank, I think is right? It's Frank, right? It's back, and it's kind of... There's a lot of Christmas theme to it. But I, that can't be the whole game. The whole game can't be... Well, I guess it can. It seems like it takes place... I think they're trying to get back to the Dead Rising 1 formula. It seems like they're trying to get back to that, especially by bringing back Frank. Um, so I guess if it takes place during, like, three days or whatever... If it's three days before Christmas. Oh, okay, I guess. Um, Scalebound. <laughs> so they showed off Scalebound. So, basically, they just showed off Final Fantasy XV again. That That's really what it looked like. It just it looked like more Final Fantasy XV footage. I don't, it just doesn't... I, I don't know. I've never liked anything Platinum Games has done. Even though people just rave and rave about it. It just seems too... I don't know. I don't. I've tried some of their stuff, but it, it just it hasn't caught on. I don't know. I don't know. Then we got Sea of Thieves from Rare. Yeah, Rare. You remember them? Uh, we did get some gameplay, but it had like I don't know if they were YouTubers or or just people off the street or what. 
But they had, like, a, you know, a, a picture in picture of these people just playing Sea of Thieves and just having a great time. Just, oh, yeah, Sea of Thieves, yeah! Like, I, I could do that. Hire me to do that. I'll just, I'll just yell at the camera and just pretend to push buttons. Like, I don't, I don't even have to play the game. Don't, I'll just, I'll send you the video footage and you can just splice it in. Just, oh, Sea of Thieves, yeah! Like, I can do that. I think anybody can do that. Okay. State of Decay 2. You may remember State of Decay. State of Decay was the zombie game where you're given just like a host of uh, survivors of all different types. And you have to kind of gather supplies and, you know, live your life in, in, in different locations and build fortifications. And each survivor has their own um, skills and uses and, and things like that. But in reality, you just play as the one black guy named Marcus... Who just runs train on all the zombies non-stop that's state of decay um but state of decay was a surprising big hit um so i, I don't think anybody's shocked that state of decay 2 is coming out next year uh halo wars 2 that's probably a bit more of a surprise because i didn't think halo wars 1 did that well not many people ever talk about it but okay halo wars 2 and there's a beta that i think is going on at this moment but I don't like RTS, so whatever. And then finally, we wrapped up with another hardware announcement. This is more in line with what people were thinking. <sighs> Project Scorpio. Also, I guess, called Xbox 1.5. So Project Scorpio is... It's part of the Xbox One family, okay? Okay. It, it, is, it, it will play Xbox One games, okay? And there will not be Project Scorpio exclusives. So no developer is going to make games that will say, well, you can only play this on the new Xbox One, okay? That will not happen. It is all part of just the one Xbox One family. That's it. Uh, as they said, no one gets left behind. But what Project Scorpio is, is basically like a supercharged Xbox One. So it has eight cores. Okay, I mean, eight cores of what? Six teraflops? Okay. 320 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth? I, I don't know what any of that means. Um, but more specifically, it will allow for VR and 4K resolution. <sighs> okay. So. It's kind of. It's interesting. It, it's the most interesting thing that Microsoft talked about at their conference. It doesn't. It's odd, right? It's an odd thing. It's a, it's a very odd thing because it doesn't happen almost ever in the console world. This kind of update to hardware, but not a new generation. It's somewhat akin to like the Sega 32X, where it's like, yeah, you know, it's still part of this thing, but it's better. Uh, now, the 32X was, of course, a little different because they had 32X games. that were You needed the 32X and the CD 32X games where you needed all the things. And, of course, that was a huge flop. So, Project Scorpio, I guess the idea is if you want better resolution and you want higher uh, frame rates and blah, 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 you can get Project Scorpio. You'll still, it doesn't matter, you're not going to get left out. If you don't get Scorpio, you know, Xbox One games are just Xbox One games. Um, but if you want that, if you want that that upgrade, it's there. So it doesn't divide the market, okay? There's not Xbox One people over here and Scorpio people over here. And, you know, it's not a generational gap. But then it's like... Well, what's the point? 
do people honestly care about resolution that much? If you care about resolution that much, buy a PC. <laughs> that's it. I, I feel like that's that's the distinction. Is you either have money to care about resolution and frame rate, or you buy consoles. There's probably some in between, like, I, yo, I would love to have higher resolution, but I don't have enough for a good PC. But, you know, the, the weak Xbox One is going to cost $300. So how much does a strong Xbox One cost? $500? But they also talked about VR. Now, VR is kind of its own thing. You know, there are going to be VR-only games. Because that, that's just how it is. There are VR-only games. That's the future. So, if there are VR-only games, then they can only be played where you can do VR gaming. Now, they talked about bringing out Project Scorpio to assist with the VR gaming. But, no one gets left behind. So... Do I need a Scorpio to do VR on Xbox One, I'm saying? Or don't I? Now, a big thing with VR that I think a lot of people don't understand is that the reason VR is happening now is because our technology is finally at that point where it, it feels smooth. Um, so you need a certain frame rate. In order for you to not throw up, basically. If you don't reach that frame rate, it's it's terrible. VR doesn't work. Yeah, I think, you know, you need 90 frames per second. So, it's, okay, it's possible. It's possible that with Project Scorpio, you get native 90 frames per second. And with, if you try it with regular Xbox One, weak Xbox One, you get 45 frames per second with reprojection. Where basically they, like the software basically predicts what the missing, the next frame, the missing frame is. And then just puts that in for it. So it doesn't actually like render it, it just like, here you go. And so it kind of tricks it into being 90, but it's not actually 90. Um, there are, on PC you can do this. And I would imagine some stuff on PS4 is probably going to do that. That could be. I, I wouldn't be shocked at that. But I think to the layman, it's like, well, if I can do VR on the weak one, why should I pay for the strong? I, I think there's going to be a lot of... It's weird. Bottom line, it's it's weird. I've talked for 53 minutes already. My God, it's going to be an hour and a half. That's fine. We all love it. It's a weird thing because it, it seems... I may be unique in this. I may be unique in this that I don't really care about resolution. I, 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 I don't. I mean, for VR, I do. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, with regular gaming, it's like, whatever. Resolution, fine. Who cares? Ultra graphics, I, I don't care. But with VR, it's like, I want I want all the resolutions. I want it all up in my... In, I want it covering my eyeballs. Uh, resolution really matters there. But for regular, it's like, mm, whatever. I don't, I don't care. <sighs> I, th I feel like what I care about, in general... You know, I, in general, is not resolution or frame rates, but general technological advance advances. Um, and part of that is graphical. I mean, of course it is. You know, like Neverwinter Nights, the first Neverwinter Nights. I, I hate. It. I can't play it. I hate it. It just looks how I just can't handle how it looks. Baldur's Gate Two, my favorite game of all time. And, you know, they announced Neverwinter Nights, and I was like, oh, man, yes. Like, another game like Baldur's Gate, but in a different, you know, sure, let's do it. And I tried it out, and I was like, I, I, I can't, I can't play this. I can't play this game. Um, and there are other games during that era that are just unacceptable, and I just can't play. And, you know, we've, we've made graphical leaps, and, you know, for the better. For the better. In general, for the better. These kind of graphical updates for more polygons and things like that. But there are also other kind of technological updates. 
like, characters on screen. You know, in the old days, you couldn't have many characters on screen without just bogging everything down. And now we're getting to the point with, like, you know, um, like Dead Rising 3. Dead Rising 3 was pretty impressive. Just for the sheer number of zombies that were on screen at one point. Um, and it's just like, you know, you can really kind of put more scope and epicness and depth to games. And this is in, 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 in all sorts of aspects. Um, just kind of the breadth that games can showcase. Um, that were not, they weren't capable of in the past because of just technological limitations. And that is what I care about more. It's kind of just this general advancement of games. And, you know, like Witcher 3. Like, Witcher 3 is a very technologically advanced game that we would not be, we wouldn't have been capable of 12 years ago. Okay? And it doesn't matter if you play Witcher 3 on low or on ultra. It's still Witcher 3. Like, it still has all the same features. Okay? That's what I care about most, is gameplay features. Because that's why I play games. Like, okay, Witcher 3, yeah, it looks better on ultra than it does on low. Okay, nobody's arguing that. But I care more about the features of the game. And that generally comes from console generation. You know, the next generation of games. Generally more impressive. In a technological sense, maybe not pure gameplay, but... I mean, I'm not that sapped on nostalgia that I think games are just... Oh, games used to be good and now they're bad. Um, and so this, where it's not a generational thing, it's just... Oh yeah, it's just another Xbox One that looks better. It just it doesn't matter to me. Because it's still... The fact that there isn't exclusives on it is just like, well, I don't have no need for this. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe some people care more, but I, I don't know. We'll see how that comes along and how well it does and blah, blah, blah. Let's move along. My goodness. Uh, there was a PC gaming show, but I didn't really watch much of it, which is surprising since I'm primarily a PC gamer. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't a conference. It was just day nine just sitting there and talking to people about games which i think a lot of people's like i wish e3 was like that i actually don't i love the spectacle i love the spectacle of e3 i hope it never changes and nobody is more spectacular than ubisoft my god and they don't disappoint ever it's always just insane it's just insanity non-stop they do it on purpose it's just french insanity so, uh, they started off with dancing to Queen. Just Dance. I think they started a bunch of conferences with Just Dance. So, yeah, there was dancing, and then Aisha Tyler came out. And I was actually hoping they wouldn't have Aisha Tyler. It seems like they're not going to get rid of her for a long time now. Like, she, I, something's going on there. That's all I'm saying. So I'm saying something's going on there with Aisha Tyler and Ubisoft. But I digress. So she talked about Just Dance. Nobody cares. I probably went and made a sandwich. And then she talked about Ghost Recon Wildlands. I've never played a Ghost Recon game in my life. I'll admit that. Never played one. Don't know anything about the series. So I don't know. Um, but this game, it does actually look pretty fun. It actually seems like the kind of game that my friends and I wanted, like, ten years ago. <laughs> or eight years ago. Like, if you were to show this, would be like, oh, we're all over this. Nowadays, I don't know if I could get the group of friends together and all buy it and with, you know, skepticism and cynicism and kind of all that going on. I don't know if it'll ever happen. But, personally, I think it looks pretty cool. Now, that is an Ubisoft game, so it'll probably under-deliver and really suck ass and blah, blah, blah. But it looks cool, which is just par for the course for Ubisoft. They always make things look cool. Um, although they really, they really need to stop with the fake gamer conversations that, like, just nobody, no, no, there, there's got it. somebody out there likes it. Somebody out there is like, oh man, I wish I was as cool as those people talking like that. 
Oh man, that's awesome. Nobody talks like that. Nobody talks like that. Uh, then they did probably the best fake out. Almost the best fake out. Uh, of E3 2016. For Star uh, South Park. The Fractured Butthole. They pronounce, I think they pronounce it the fractured butthole. Butthole. The fractured butthole. It's it's a good title. Uh, it was a good fake out if you if you didn't see it. I don't really care about this because I don't like South Park, but there you have it. It seems like a you know I, it, it's just one of those things where it's like I'm really I'm happy for South Park fans, South Park video game fans. They are getting, they're getting just a great thing out of this. You know, there are plenty, plenty of series that I like that I would love to see the same kind of, you know, video game justice delivered to. Um, unfortunately, I don't like South Park, so that's kind of who it's for. Uh, more division. Ugh. Yeah, you can get Splinter Cell outfits in The Division. You know what you need, Ubisoft? You need a Splinter Cell gay! And Underground DLC, and nobody cares, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, then they showed off VR, although it was really the Rift, so... I don't know if Ubisoft got the memo that the Rift is going down in flames. But they had... A bunch of people come on stage and play Eagle Flight, which is a game that I heard about a while back when I was, you know, when I was just doing all the VR research. <sighs> they had Palmer Lucky up there, which I'm sure most people there probably didn't know who Palmer Lucky is. Palmer Lucky is the founder of Oculus and basically the inventor of the Rift. Um, he's also becoming quite the douchebag. Uh, <laughs> um, he's growing quite the reputation for saying things and then basically being a hypocrite. So, not many people are, are big fans of Palmer Lucky at this point. Uh, but he was up there with his flip-flops and playing Eagle Flight and the game looks like it'd be fun for about an hour. But, the second VR game they showed off, now that is something much more interesting. That was Star Trek Bridge Crew. Which is you in VR on the bridge of the USS Not Enterprise. Uh, and each person has a role and you're controlling the ship. And it's like the Artemis spaceship simulator, but probably not as detailed. And you're in Star Trek. And so, of course, they had a bunch of celebrities that were in Star Trek, like... LeVar Burton and Carl Urban and Jerry Ryan. I think that's it. That's all they got. That's all they could get. Um, but I will like anything that Carl Urban likes. So I will get Star Trek Bridge Crew. Now it's prop. Here's the problem is it's prop. I mean, it's either not multiplayer online, which means nobody will ever play this because nobody almost anywhere except for like developing like companies have more than one rift or, or vive so that will never get played so it has to be online multiplayer but then i have to be on the bridge of a ship with strangers Ugh. so i'm hoping other people get some some vr real quick because it's it's you know then we got for honor we got some gameplay from For Honor, single player gameplay for For Honor. Uh, it actually looked pretty slick. Damn you, Ubisoft. Downgrade. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it looks okay, but I, it's, it's so hard to trust Ubisoft at this point. It's so hard. Why should I trust them ever on anything? Damn them. Then they got the Grow Home sequel called Grow Up. Um, 
Girl Home was a game I streamed on a whim one day, and it really pissed me off. That is my story of Girl Home. I have no interest in Grow Up. Uh, then we got a, a hybrid. Um, some of you may recall Far Cry Blood Dragon, which was a standalone game based on Far Cry 3. That was very 80s and just wacky and crazy and zany and kind of cool. It was actually kind of a cool standalone game. I did an LP of it. Um, I thought it was decent. So now they're doing Trials of the Blood Dragon, which is Trials, but with the wackiness of Blood Dragon. Nobody asked for this. No, Nobody wanted this. Um, I don't... I, I've never played Trials. Actually, when I was in high school, in CAD class, when all of us were never doing any CAD work, um, I seem to recall playing something like Trials on like a Flash website. I don't know if it was called Trials, but it was like that same thing. You were on like a motorcycle or something and you were going through a level and trying to, to fall on your face. So I guess I've kind of played something like it. I guess, yeah, I guess that's okay. But they showed off some footage, and you were not even on a motorcycle. You were shooting people. And it was like, well, I don't know what kind of game this is, but maybe I should check it out. And it was available, like, immediately. After the conference ended. It was it was available. See, that's how you should do stuff. That's how they, they should do Elder Scrolls 6. It's it's available now. Go check your store. It's, it's uh, Go. And people just type on Amazon. It's available. That will never happen. But okay. Then, the most egregious thing of all time. Yeah, it is. It's the most egregious thing. It's happened before. But it's it's the most egregious thing you can do at a video game conference. Is not talk about video games. They talked about the Assassin's Creed movie. Yeah, yeah, they did. They talked about the Assassin's Creed movie. I don't care if it's based on a video game. It's not a game. It's a movie. You can't talk about it. Now, the only thing worse was in J when James Cameron talked about Avatar for 34 minutes. That was the most egregious thing, but still, just no. Then, Watch Dogs 2, we got some gameplay of that. I wasn't... I mean, I, I didn't think Watch Dogs was amazing. But I wasn't a hater of it. I thought it was okay. I did a whole LP of it. It was a lengthy LP. I played all the way through. I thought it was okay. Yeah, absolutely. It could be improved. And yeah, what they showed of Watch Dogs 2 seemed pretty similar to Watch Dogs 1. But I guess in that sense, they're probably, I guess, being a bit more upfront about it. Like, they're not saying... It didn't seem like they were lying about anything or really covering stuff up or, like, over-hyping it or anything like that. It's like, yeah, that'll probably be what it, what it's like. So yeah, I'll probably get it. Then they have their big final announcement, which is generally something exciting. Not this year. Because it was something called Steep. Which is a... Uh, it's a sports game. I This would fall... This would fall in the sports genre, I think. If, if you had to divide it into a genre, it would be in the sports category. It's sports. It's snowboarding, skiing, base jumping, maybe something else. Paragliding stuff. Parachuting. All sorts of that kind of stuff. Um, and it seemed like it was all connect, like it was all online and you could share things and you had friends that were also doing it and you could record your things and and look at this, and it's like, I, I don't care about any of this. I don't, I don't, I don't care anything. And Aisha Tyler kept talking, and I was just, I, I don't care. All right, moving on to the best conference of the show was Sony. Yeah, Sony won E3. I'll spoil that for you. No doubt in my mind. E, Sony won E3. Um, and it wasn't kind of, it wasn't even like a... Like a gimme. Like everybody else was so bad. And Sony just did okay. I was like, okay, I guess they win. Like, no, they... 
they they won it fair and square uh it started off with like a full orchestra live conducted by bear mccreary with like this epic like mm, yeah music and i actually called it during during the 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 performance which it was literally just a performance. there wasn't any footage or anything playing it was just a performance and i was like you know remember that i remember that god of war norse thing that there was rumored about months ago yeah turns out that's what it was for uh we got a gameplay trailer for god of war now this is kind of bullshit it's god of war 4 but okay it's kind of an offshoot even though it is they haven't it, it's a sequel there's no it's a it's, it's the same kratos it's a sequel but okay it's kind of an offshoot so okay call it god of war ragnarok or something don't call it god of war we already have a god of war it's on the playstation 2 god ah, so stupid I, I really hate that practice yeah it's called god of war that's it um but aside from the lame title it looks awesome. It looks awesome. I'm so, I'm so hyped. I'm so glad that series is not done. Uh, just give me all give me all the God of War. I'll play it all. I'll play it all. I don't care. I love it. Uh, and Norse Norse mythology like that's that's even better. It's so much cooler. Yes. And he's got a big beard and he, oh, and he's got a kid. Well, okay, that's not that cool, but um, I'm. It's possible that his son will get kidnapped or killed. It, I mean, it's very possible his son will get killed. It happened to his last kid. And then he's just like, I hate all of you god bastards. <laughs> Could happen. Very hyped about that. Very hyped. Uh, uh, days Gone. So they announced a game called Days Gone. They showed a trailer for it. And then at the end of the show, they showed off gameplay. And that's kind of weak. Personally, that's kind of weak. I feel like they had nothing really big to end on. Because they started with God of War. Yeah, I'd say it's probably... Cause they, yeah, they didn't have any other big gameplay to end on. So they're like, well... Just do the ga Days Gone gameplay at the end. But I don't know. I feel like... Put it together. Just put it at the same time. Don't... I don't know. Um, I'll talk about the gameplay later then. Last Guardian. We finally got a release date for Last Guardian. We got gameplay. We got trailers. We got everything we need. And we finally got a release date of October 25th, 2016. Which is like three days before... Something... Titanfall. Yes. Titanfall 2. Right. That's what it was. Because I was celebrating the end of horror games. Um, I guess I will also celebrate with Last Guardian, which is much... It's very lighthearted fair. It's not going to be lighthearted. That animal is going to die, and I'm going to cry, and it's going to be terrible. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which we saw last year, still is not out. Um, still looks good. Very interested in that game. It's kind of like monster hunter with like tomb raider and somewhat open world and it's like it, the like the the setting and all that is is right up my alley like prehistoric but also like weird science yeah um, the yes awesome then they showed this uh this big trailer from from quantic dreams uh david cage who did heavy rain and that other game with Ellen Page. Beyond? I think it was called. But this one's called Detroit Become Human. I feel like this is kind of a incorrect title. Because I think Detroit is where you... You become inhuman. Maybe that's the idea. Anyways. <laughs> Detroit Become Human... Um, I guess you play as an android, uh, who is a detective 
of some type. He's, he's, he's part of the police force. And it seemed like like time travel is involved or, or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how this game is actually set up. Um, but like you, you're, you, you you see this crime happen and you fail to prevent the crime from happening, but then you go back and you like go through all these different methods and paths and branching things and discover different clues. And it looks like just a, a, a network of decision trees, um, and see if you can alter the crime from happening which is uh, yes yeah it, it looked awesome it looked awesome i mean i, I didn't even play beyond i watched a I watched a let's play of it which is a rare time of me actually watching a let's play um but i did play heavy rain and i liked heavy rain but this looks even better than all those so even though it takes place in detroit we'll let it happen because they need a lot of crimes to happen i guess so what better place okay um, then they started talking about PlayStation VR, which I do plan on getting, even though I own the Vive. There's going to be a lot of PSVR exclusives. And even though exclusives suck, because, you know, I already spent a lot on the Vive and all that. I have to spend even more just to play these games. It's probably going to be worth it. Even though the first game they showed off for PlayStation VR was a horror game. It, it's a, it was a horror game. Uh, it looked like... It looked like PT, to be honest. Um, it it was it looked horrific, and so my this was probably the biggest fake out. Even though it, there wasn't even intended to be a fake out for me, it was a fake out. This was the biggest fake out because uh, it was real to be Resident Evil Seven. It just it was like I, I couldn't even believe my eyes when that title screen came up. I was just like, what? What? Because I think we all remember Resident Evil 6. And that trailer was nothing like Resident Evil 6. So, yeah. My mind was blown. It seems like they're very much going back to their roots for horror. Um, and, yeah. So, I'm going to have to let's play it. And I'm going to be scared and blah, blah, blah. Um, they showed off uh, some game called Farpoint, which is like a first-person shooter, but we still don't know about Locomotion, which nobody likes to talk about. Uh, Star Wars X-Wing VR Mission, which I'm actually... I don't think I'm as hyped about it as probably some people are, because now that I play on PC in VR with a joystick and a throttle and the whole HOTAS thing and, you know, it's actually proper and blah, 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 playing it on PlayStation... Like, I guess they have flight sticks for PlayStation. Like, they have to, right? But I don't want to have to buy one for PlayStation. I guess I don't have to. I mean, it's all USB. Well, yeah, then I guess maybe it'll work out. If I can use the one I already have, which is a fairly decent one, then maybe that is good. Although, I, w I hope... Uh, probably, yeah, it is a PlayStation VR exclusive. That seems kind of bullshit. But okay. Then we also got a Batman Arkham VR teaser. I have no idea what it is. Um, I, it's not going to be like Batman Arkham Asylum VR. It, it's not, it's not going to be that game in VR. It's, it's going to be kind of its own thing. I, I guess they're focusing in on him as a detective, that kind of whole detective experience in VR. Okay. I'd like to see gameplay. Then they showed off Final Fantasy 15 VR experience, which is the biggest bullshit thing I saw at the whole conference. And apparently people that played it also confirmed it was bullshit. Because it's literally, I guess, you standing there with a gun while the other characters are, like, fighting a big monster. And you're just sitting there, like, like just shooting it. And then it dies. And then that's it. Apparently, that's it. But according to the people at, at E3, the demo of the VR experience ended with you in the car. You're in a car with the female Sid. As a side note, if you haven't heard about this. Final Fantasy 15, they finally have a female Sid named Sydney. And they basically turn Japan for just being at the front of gender politics and gender equality. It's like, hey, you know, why do why does Sid always have to be a guy? That's bullshit. Let's make a female Sid to show that female can be, you know, badass pilots and engineers and things like that too. That'll be awesome. Yeah, okay, but let's put her in a just a bra. 
And let's have a lot of cleavage. And just, let's have people in the VR experience just sit in the car and, and stare at her tits. Huh? Huh? <laughs> My goodness, Japan. Then we got to look at Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. And actually, when they were first showing this, I had no idea it was Call of Duty. I had no idea. There was, I guess there was multiple fakeouts. I had no idea it was Call of Duty. I thought it was like Battlestar Galactica VR. Like, it looked really, like, bad. Like, you got in the ship and you're flying. There was, like, you're going through this big space combat and you were blasting things and you, like, jumped out. And then once you jumped out a little ways into that, I realized, this is, this is Call of Duty. Because it, you know, it still looks like Call of Duty. But the, the, spot, the flying, that looked really cool. Uh, Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, and 3 are being remastered, just like everything else. Something about Crash Bandicoot in Skylanders. Nobody cares. Um, then we brought out Hideo Kojima. And I was like, when, when I saw him come out, I was like, there, there's no way he has anything to show of his new project. Like he, like he just started the new company not that long ago. They, they don't have a game. They don't have gameplay. I was right. They don't have gameplay. Um, but the game that he's working on is called Death Stranding, which is not a great name for a game. And I guess the big thing is it involves Norman Reedus. So there's a little timeline for you. Norman Reedus joined up with Hideo Kojima, and Konami to make a game called Silent Hills, which was going to be a big new entry in the Silent Hills series. It was also apparently going to involve Guillermo del Toro. This all fell apart, though, because something happened with Hideo Kojima. We're not sure what. So that all fell apart. That's never happened. It's never happening. So... I guess Norman Reedus was either like, well, I mean, I, I, I don't know what's going to happen with the Silent Hill series, but I can't imagine it's done with. They're going to keep making Silent Hill games. So I guess Norman Reedus was like, well, I could stick with Konami and maybe get in the next Silent Hill game anyways, or I can stick with my man Hideo Kojima. He's stuck with Kojima. So now he's working with him to make this game called Death Stranding, which we saw a really weird trailer for. No gameplay, no news of any kind. They literally just showed off this CG trailer with a baby and a naked Norman Reedus. And that's about it. Then uh, Spider-Man, we got a teaser with some slight gameplay footage of a PS4 Spider-Man game from Insomniac Games, which is really exciting news. I'm excited about that. Uh, and then they showed... The gameplay footage of Days Gone, which is a, another zombie game. But, again, it looks like it just looks like a game I would play. It, it's just That's just one of my kind of games. Which are just kind of, you know, third-person action-adventure games. Uh, with a lot of guns and, and killing things. And just hopefully well-polished. And blah, blah, blah. It's just that's what I play. Um, yeah, there's a lot of Last of Us vibes. I'll, I'll admit but it looks good. And that's how they ended. So, overall, for Sony, let's count the things that I will either play or let's play. God of War, Days Gone, Last Guardian, Horizon Zero Dawn, Detroit Become Human, Resident Evil, uh, the X-Wing missions, or 7, Batman Arkham VR, 8, um... Call of Duty, I'll even give it that. I'll probably play it, so 9. <sighs> Death Stranding, I'm sure I'll end up playing it, so 10. And Spider-Man, 11. Almost everything that they showed. Almost everything that they showed, I'm going to play. That's just stupendous. How can, how can they not win after that? It's just stupendous. And there was no fluff. They didn't show off new hardware or, or talk about upcoming features for PlayStation Network. Just games, 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 games. And it all looked great. Well done, Sony. Okay, finally, I want to get this done before an hour and a half. I think over an hour and a half, that's too long. So finally, Nintendo. Nintendo showed, as far as I know, two things. One was Pokemon. Pokemon Sun and Moon, they talked about for like 40 minutes. 
I went and made many sandwiches during that part. And then a lot, a lot, a lot of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. AKA Skyrim HD. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so, okay. I would say this is the most Western Zelda game to date. I think there's a lot of elements that are central to Western game design. Which is fine. And I think plenty of people would agree that it's the most unique Zelda games so far. Which is what they're going for. Um, I think they said that they're both trying to break a lot of the conventions unique to Zelda. While also going back to the roots of Zelda. Uh, I think they were playing a, paying a lot of homages to the original Zelda game with like the old man at the start of the game and the sense of discovery and things like that. And there were other elements they were talking about. But nonetheless, overall, it's, it's basically an open world Zelda game. And there will be dungeons and there will probably be every element from Zelda that you, you know and love is probably going to be in the game in some shape or form. But overall, it's an open-world Zelda game from pretty much the start of the game with a very big world. Like, they were showing off a full demo that most people, they, they said nobody could explore the whole thing in the time given to them. And they said that it's only 2% of the full game. And they removed all the NPCs. So apparently it's a very big game. I think it looks fine. I mean, I... I I don't want to say I'm excited for it. Because I have kind of a lukewarm relationship with the Zelda series. I'm... Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I'm glad they're experimenting with the formula. That is what I'll say. I am glad for that. Because I think even they realize that eventually all these games kind of blend together. You know, every game you're kind of doing the same thing. You start out without any equipment... You go through these dungeons for one reason or another. You're getting your 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 hook shot. You're getting your bow. You're getting your bombs. You know you're getting different shields. You're getting the master sword. You know it all kind of blends together. Now in this in this new one, you're probably going to be doing the same thing. You're going to be going through dungeons. You're going to be getting your bows. You're going to be getting your bombs. You're going to be getting the master sword, so on and so forth. But the the form. The way that you do these things is probably going to be different. <sighs> I mean, yeah, they're they're experimenting with the formula, and I think that's very good. Now, it's it's also kind of risky for them. In general, I feel like Nintendo kind of, in recent years, has taken bigger risks with their hardware than with their software. You know, they, they do weird gimmicks with, like, the Wii. And, you know, the Wii Motes and things like that. And the Wii U with the second screen. And, you know, they, they do kind of weird stuff like that. But the software, the games have always just kind of been, oh, it's another Mario game. They're doing Mario stuff. It's another Zelda game. It's just doing Zelda stuff. So I think it's good that they're experimenting more on the software side than the hardware side. Because, really, that's what I want. I don't want gimmicks with my hardware. I don't want Wii Motes. I don't want second screens. I want my one screen. You know, I want good hardware with unique Nintendo games. You know, the Super Nintendo had no gimmicks. I mean, okay, there were accessories, but out the, the regular, there was no gimmicks with Super Nintendo. It was just damn good games. Some of the best games ever made. Just on regular good hardware. And I don't know where they kind of drifted off from that. But, you know... I'm not saying they should go third party. Because I think that could just muddle things a whole hell of a lot. But, you know, I want my Zelda games. I want Metroid. I want... I, I Yeah, I guess I want Mario. Yeah, I want their... I want classic Nintendo games, but just... Done in a modern way. In a good way. You know, I don't, I don't want gimmicks. I don't think anybody wants gimmicks. I don't want Link's crossbow training. 
So I think this is a good step towards that. Now, the big question is, why the hell did they show this off for the Wii U? Um, I mean, the, it just I'm, I'm over an hour and a half, so I'll try to go quick. But it just mystifies me why they didn't show off the NX and why they're showing this on, like, the NX version is apparently going to be pretty much the same thing, which is not what I want to hear. The re like I talked about before, the reason you go to the next generation of consoles is because of the technological advancements, because you can push things further than you could before. If it's the exact same, why are people going to buy the NX? You know, this Zelda was supposed to be the system seller for the NX. That's what I had predicted for so long. Like, it's going to come out, NX exclusive, it's going to blow people away, everybody's going to rush out. I need the NX, I need the new Zelda, bundle it together, I need it now! You know, it's gonna be, it would be like, it would be like, it would be like the original Legend of Zelda, you know, it would just be a system seller. <coughs> it doesn't seem to be going that way. People that already have a Wii U, that I want this game, have no reason to buy an NX, because it's just the same thing, so they're gonna buy it on the Wii U. And, people are gonna see the NX and be like, okay, well, I can buy this new expensive one, or I can buy just the cheap, you know, like there's gonna be there's a lot of used Wii U's on the market, so I'll just buy that and buy Zelda and boom, it's the same thing. Now it's possible that the NX will be so incredible that it just is a system seller by itself, but that remains to be seen. They didn't show it off anyway, so we'll have to wait till TGS in September. I don't know. It just kind of mystifies me. I don't know what they're doing, but the NX is really gonna have to blow some socks off because I think if Nintendo just keeps going downhill. You know, people, people say, Nintendo fanboys say, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if they flounder, you know, they, they, they go down for a few years or anything like that. It doesn't matter. They have so much money saved up, they could fail for 50 years and still be around. Yeah, board of directors don't really see it like that. Um, Nintendo, like, they're not, they're not in it. They're not in it to just entertain us. They're not in it to just make, you know, what we want. And just make fun games and just experiment and and just keep us happy because if they were we would have mother 3 in America uh, we don't they are in it they are a business they are there to make money that is always the bottom line so if they're if they're going down this way for a long enough time people are gonna step in and be like okay you're done no more of this no more of this NX bullshit we're making mobile games, and you're going to like it. Uh, I mean, Mitomo, look at that. They, they were talking about Mitomo during the treehouse. They were talking about this shit. <laughs> so, I don't know. So, I don't think they can experiment and, and just try crazy things for that long. They, they need to succeed. The NX needs to be a success. So, I mean, I got my fingers crossed just as much as the rest of you. I hope it's good. I really do. Because there are plenty of Nintendo games that I've liked throughout my life. You know. <laughs> I was raised as, as a Nintendo kid, you know. I'm sure probably one of my first games ever was, you know, Super Mario Brothers. Or Mar yeah. Super Mario Brothers 3, I would guess. So, yeah. I hope the NX is good. I'm shocked they didn't show it off here, but I guess they are a Japanese company. Tokyo Game Show was just kind of their thing, I suppose. <sighs> Hopefully, we'll also see some Bloodborne 2 at TGS, but I my fingers are crossed even tighter for that one. All right, so let's wrap up now that, now that I've talked for a very long time. I, I rated the EA one, but I didn't rate the other one. So EA, C-, Bethesda, oh gosh, C. Yeah, probably C. They really didn't show much. I don't know if they even needed a conference this year. C could have been could have been missed. Uh, Microsoft. Uh, C plus. I'll give them a C plus. They showed off some stuff that was quite intriguing, but they did make a lot of rookie mistakes. Um, but there was a decent amount of gameplay shown, but 
talking about hardware and not showing off any of it, just teasing hardware, that, that should never be done. So I don't know. Maybe a C as well. Uh, Ubisoft, oh god. I mean, on the one hand, they did show off some stuff that I'm very interested in, but on the other hand, it's just, it's Ubisoft, how high can you, I don't think they can ever get a B. So... <sighs> yeah, probably, probably C, yeah, probably C. They, they did okay, but still the dancing and and just... Eh, well, I guess. I'll give them a C plus. I'll be nice to Ubisoft. Get rid of Aisha Tyler. Stop the dancing. Maybe you can make it to a B someday. Sony, solid, solid A for me. Solid A. I mean, like I said, almost everything they showed was, was stuff I want. They showed gameplay for almost everything. Um, they didn't, they didn't fluff around with, with business talk. They didn't screw on with really sports. Um, yeah, A, maybe A minus because they didn't show gameplay for everything. So it can't quite reach that level, but a very good conference. Definitely E3 winner. <sighs> Nintendo... I don't know if I can even rate them because it wasn't a conference. It was a four-hour treehouse segment. Um, they talked about two games. But on the other hand, I guess if I was really into both those games, that was it would probably be like the conference I would want. They didn't waste time. They didn't just tease things. It was just, here's a bunch of shit. Here it is. I'll give them a B, I guess. Like, overall, it's just, it's not interesting enough on a broad scale to be like that alluring but for what it is how it was presented you know what it was i guess i'll give them a, a b all right so that's gonna wrap up the uh my thoughts on e3 2016 very long video i know I, I knew it would be long i can't there's just there's a lot to talk about and i i talk a lot and i drag things out i'm still dragging things out uh so let me know your thoughts about some e3 stuff Let's chat in the comments section. All that good stuff. My name is Mang, and I'll see you fine folks around.